All right, season three of The Legendary Journeys is where the show really gets to getting a much better stride to it. Now, we've still got kind of open and shut cases on certain episodes, but they're much better off than some of the lackluster ones from season two. You know, season one was good. Season two kind of lackluster. Season three, terrific. Um, the episodes start getting a little bit better, and we start to have a little more fun with uh, Hercules taking on things like uh, he fights an Egyptian mummy, he fights Cupid, uh, or at least a monster that Cupid turns into, uh, and we get a nice closeout to the season with him going to Atlantis just before it sinks. Uh, this season also allows us to take a little more risk with certain characters. Uh, Aeolus gets about three solo episodes to himself, or at least episodes to where he leaves Hercules' company and goes off and does his own thing. Sometimes this can be detrimental to a particular series to when it uh, takes too much focus away from the main character, as in the case with Highlander the series, to where, you know, Duncan didn't even start showing up in the episodes, or a lot of the episodes of the last season, and never mind that because they started sucking any anyways, but that's a different story. But, uh, it's just enough to where Aeolus does his own thing, and we get to enjoy him much more as a character. Uh, and sometimes we get surprises brought out, uh, as in the case of Aphrodite, who I did talk about from the last one. Aphrodite, like a lot of other characters in here, is hysterical. Um, she starts out as a villain in, a, in an episode in the last season where uh, she was manipulating people, and there's one in here where she's fed up with being the goddess of love, and she wants to go off and try different things, and that's one of the Aeolus, or one of the solo episodes with the Aeolus. Um, I love Aphrodite. She's betrayed like this, uh, gorgeous looking, but very bimbonic kind of woman. Again, some of the Americanization coming into the Greek mythology, but I don't mind this. And uh, that's a really good episode. Uh, some other things are done here and there, but uh, I think really the best thing to come out of this season and possibly this series are, are is the three-part episode which deals with Hercules uh, falling in love again this time with Serena. Uh, Serena is the last of a species called the Golden Hinds. Uh, basically Zeus destroyed a lot of her, well the Hinds are like the female version of centaurs except that they have, uh, the lower body being that of a deer and instead of a horse. And, uh, Hercules winds up falling in love with her mortal form. Uh, and... Ares is trying to manipulate Zeus's genocide of these creatures simply because uh, him having the blood of a creature, which is death to the other gods in this series, uh, actually puts him in a position of power. Um, I like the actor who p portrayed uh, Ares in this, although I kind of hated that we, that we didn't go with the betrayal of Ares in the way that we went with Hera, where she was kind of like this Cthulian... Uh, menace which hung around uh, but I think that the actor who played uh, Ares did a good enough job wasn't really crazy about strife though uh, but the Serena episodes are written so well and bring out some of the best acting that we see in a lot of the main characters and plus we kind of get uh, Xena and Gabrielle crossing over into this and the last part of the trilogy which is really good uh, and it's also really sad rewatching the episodes too you won't weep when uh, Serena is murdered, but you will kind of cry a little bit, and the burial scene is a lot more emotional, too. Uh, but as if that's not enough, we have, you know, after three episodes of dealing with Serena, we go back, you know, not seven episodes later, and visit it again with uh, a time travel episode, uh, which brings back Autolycus into this. Uh, Hercules catches Autolycus stealing uh, the stone which can allow him to travel through time and they both wind up traveling back to the village where or like years before when uh, Ares 
just found Serena, and uh, we kind of have the him falling in love with the thing all over again. Uh, this could come off really creepy, and they, they got kind of like this thing about, you know, we shouldn't mess with the future, but Hercules goes against his better judgment and does it with, you know, stopping Ares from uh, getting Serena up under his power. Uh, if you thought that the knife in the back of a viewer after Serena died in the short-lived marriage of Hercules was bad, this in some ways gives a more positive ending to the situation with Serena, but yet it makes it so much worse at the same time. Uh, and I kind of quote Hercules a little bit in saying that after all everything was said and done and Autolycus and he returned uh, back to the present, that... Uh, Serena really wound up being the best thing that ever happened to Hercules. So it, it's kind of a very bittersweet ending to uh, that saga. Uh, but overall with the series, this is much, much better than season two to me. And uh, I really enjoyed this.